What the fuck do you think you're doing? Coming off the back of her hugely successful 2000 album, Music, and the subsequent 2001 Drowned World Tour, Madonna would once again collaborate with French DJ and producer Mirwais Armazi on a concept album, which would deal with the themes of American culture, the American dream, and materialism. The sound of the record would develop from Madonna's previous works, forging more of an acoustic, folk and folktronica sound. At the time, the album was critiqued harshly, but retrospectively praised, being labelled as one of Madonna's most misunderstood records. With that in mind, let's take a deep dive into this misunderstood and largely underrated album, American Life. After Madonna had completed promotion of her 1998 Ray of Light record, she would change musical direction once again, moving away from the introspective, spiritual nature of that album to something which influenced a wider range of genres, including electronica, funk, country. As with Ray of Light, William Orbit was once again involved, however to a much lesser degree, with the French DJ and producer Mirways helping to craft this next phase of Madonna's musical output. Additional contributors to that album would include Mark Spike Stent, Guy Sigsworth and Talvin Singh. The album would hit the number one spot worldwide in September of 2000. In the US, music debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, making it her first album to top the chart in more than a decade since Like a Prayer back in 1989. The album would earn five Grammy Award nominations. The following year, Madonna embarked on her Drowned World Tour in support of both the Ray of Light and Music Records. The tour received critical acclaim and ran from June to September 2001. Love isn't true, it's just something that we do. Tell me. Shortly afterwards, in November, a Greatest Hits album, GHV2, an abbreviation of Greatest Hits Volume 2, was released as a follow-up to the Immaculate Collection from 1990. GHV2 contained a collection of singles during the second decade of Madonna's career. The album did not contain any new material, but would still peak at number two in the UK and number seven in the US. And then all of a sudden, I, I thought it sounded kind of lo um, louder, then I looked up, and all of a sudden it smashed right dead into the center of the World Trade Center. From 2001 to 2003, work progressed on Madonna's next studio album. When Madonna started working on new material, she was heavily influenced by world events surrounding her, such as the 9-11 disaster and the ensuing Iraq War of 2003. She believed that the war would lead to a politically charged atmosphere throughout the country and wanted to express that in the record. This is what it looked and sounded like in Baghdad. The recording sessions for American Life started in late 2001, but were placed on hold as Madonna filmed the movie Swept Away in Malta. What are you doing? Sorry. And starred in the West End play Up for Grabs. Recording sessions would eventually be completed in early 2003. God, I, we'd recorded it everywhere, it seems. I mean, I started recording it la over a year ago. Uh, and I just kept stopping to do other things. Um, so a good part of it was done in England and a good part of it was done in Los Angeles. Um, but because I did it over such a long period of time, I was able to really hone things, change things, you know, get rid of this, get rid of that. I tend to make records in short chunks of time. And this time I really took my time. The sound of production is mm. something new again, isn't it? I hope so. Well, I mean, you, you're, you're pushing the envelope there. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the, um, the mixture of, of electronic music and the warmth of, of um, classical instruments like violins and gu acoustic guitar and stuff like that. It's kind of me. 
Around this time, Madonna was also inspired by the latest Massive Attack and Lemon Jelly albums, stating their influence of merging acoustic and electronic music together. The majority of the writing and production process was led by Mirways, with additional contributions once again from Guy Sigsworth for the track Nothing Fails, a song initially written for his wife. Nothing Fails also included lyrics by singer Jem, who was asked to collaborate with Sigsworth and Madonna during the first collaborative sessions of American Life. Mark Spike Stent would provide some additional mixing and production for Nothing Fails, as well as Hollywood and the track I'm So Stupid. Future collaborator Stuart Price would co-write Ecstatic Process, and the album's final track Easy Ride was co-written with Monty Pittman. Regarding the album's musical composition, Mirways told Remix magazine that they tried to underproduce many of the tracks to make them sound rougher than the average international pop production, and that they wanted to do something totally modern and futuristic, but not very apparent. In an interview with Larry King in October of 2002, Madonna said that she wanted to give the album a Hebrew name. Madonna then considered Ain Sof, which means endlessness, as a possible title for the record. However, as the months went on and the album developed, the title was changed to Hollywood, with Madonna saying that it was a reflection of her state of mind and a view of the world right now. Still, she was not satisfied with the name and eventually finalised on American Life. We're now uh, making a Madonna's new video, Die Another Day. It's the title track for the new Bond movie. I play uh, James Bond's fencing instructor. Actually, I'm one of the Bond girls and Halle Berry has the cameo. Okay, let's get this straight. You know, Bond girls, big boobs. I'm the one woman that's not interested in, in him in the movie. The song is about destroying your ego. <laughs> Good way to start. <laughs> Day one. Sure. This is the interrogation scene, oh. right? They're trying to get me to torture talk. chamber. They're torturing me. And in between tortures, I get to like bust out some funky dance steps. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know. Because that's what you do when you're in jail, right? You dance. Slate's in. Let's roll playback. Action! the dark side and I represent the light I still gotta kick her ass okay? Down, So will it look stupid if I punch it once and it doesn't break all the way and I it, punch it again? When you punch it, uh -huh. it'll break. Seven, man, we came back in for reshoots. You Haven't you heard MGM wasn't happy with the size of my breasts? <laughs> I want Paris to want me. Do you know what I'm saying? All right, I gotta get back to work. Thank you. 
Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, M is wrapped for the I'll Die Another Day video. I just want to say that I never want to see any of you. I'm just kidding. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks for suffering with me. Preceding the album, Die Another Day was released as a single on the 22nd of October 2002 to promote the 20th James Bond film of the same name. As well as the track being used in the main title sequence of the movie, Madonna also had a cameo in the film. She played Verity, a fencing instructor. I don't like cockfights. The song peaked at number 8 in the US and number 3 in the UK. However, the song would hit the number 1 spot in Canada, Italy, Portugal, Romania and Spain. The production costs for the music video were over six million dollars, making it the third most expensive music video ever made, after Work Bitch by Britney Spears and Scream by Michael and Janet Jackson. By 2003, Madonna suggested that she was in a revolutionary mood. French design team MM Paris were responsible for the artwork of American Life and would use this as the concept imagery for the record. The photo shoot for the album was taken by photographer Craig McDean in January 2003. This shoot had a military theme, with Madonna posing in combat attire and handling guns. Madonna's hair was dyed dark brown and on the cover of the album she wore a beret, referencing Guerriero Jerico or Heroic Guerrilla Fighter, a famous image of Che Guevara. In an interview with Vija magazine, she described Che Guevara as an icon, instantaneously identified with a revolution spirit, and that she was currently in a revolutionary state of mind herself. To be unknown in your heart, you are to blame. In your heart, you played the game. Do you realize you paid the price? Do you know the cost of all your vice? Save your soul, it's all a test. Save your soul, it's for the best. It's so cool to be uncool. It's so right to be unright. It's so good to look so bad. The cover also had military-styled stenciled lettering. The title, American Life, was written in blood-red colour and has a punk rock style. Inside the CD booklet, she wielded an Uzi submachine gun with her body in various martial art poses, spelling out her name. of games you never show your cards you claim madness it's become convenient i don't want to hear your angry words again you hear voices taunting you to leave me then you're sorry you hold me in your arms you have demons nothing them. Who can blame you if you're not in charge? Is this love? I think not. I want to get off this merry-go-round. This 
Just weeks ago, Madonna spent three days on a downtown Los Angeles soundstage shooting her brand new video, American Life. While the video definitely has a military vibe to it, the song American Life is not about war at all. Rather, it's a reflection on fame, material gain, and America's apparent obsession with it. As the one-time material girl puts it, this type of modern life isn't for me. Here's what we do know about the video. Madonna's teamed up once again with director Jonas Ackerlund for a clip that you might say depicts combat couture. Designers Stella McCartney and Jean-Paul Gaultier outfit Madonna, while Jeremy Scott's camo fashions are featured in a runway show that erupts into something more disturbing. Just how graphic and disturbing, we'll have to wait and see. Courting controversy? Madonna is, of course, old hand at that. But the girl still has at least one big surprise up her sleeve. Yep, you heard right. That is indeed Madonna rapping. It's a tongue-in-cheek inventory of the creature comforts of her good life, and in the end, whether they are what they seem. American life as seen by an American icon. Madonna at Midlife is what she sings about in her new album, American Life. She's co-written every song, and they're some of the most personal of her two-decade musical career. I'm in love with you. There are intimate lyrics about the love she says she's found with husband Guy Ritchie. Nothing is what it seems. As well as the title song, in which she not only raps, but takes an honest and harsh look at her life in the material world and the Madonna image-making machine. Let me read you some lyrics from the song American okay. Life. I tried to be a boy, I tried to be a girl, I tried to be a mess, I tried to be the best. I guess I did it wrong, that's why I wrote this song. This type of modern life is it for me, this type of modern life is it for free. Mm -hmm. what, is, what do you mean by that? That's, yeah, trying on different guises, different personalities, being a rebel, being androgynous, you know, doing all these kind of things, trying to be number one on the top. Um, but I guess I did it wrong, meaning I, I, I'm 100% sure that getting people's approval is not, is not a goal to have in life. American Life was released as the lead single from the album on the 24th of March 2003. The anti-war content of its music video was interpreted as being unpatriotic, making Madonna withdraw its release from music channels. She also released a statement saying she did so because she believed it was not appropriate to air it at that time and that she did not want to risk offending anyone who could misinterpret its meaning. A second video was produced showing Madonna donning military clothing and singing in front of the various flags of the world. The song peaked at number 37 on the Hot 100 chart in the US. In the UK, it would reach number two. Elsewhere, the single would chart much better, reaching number one in Canada, Denmark, Italy, Portugal and Switzerland. I get a double shot it It goes into my body and you know I'm satisfied I drop my mini cooper and I'm feeling super happy You're the champion, I'm the trooper and you know I'm satisfied I do yoga and Pilates, the room is full of hobbies So I'm checking out the bodies and you know I'm satisfied I'm taking only isotopes, this metaphysic shit is dope And he follows to give me hope, you know I'm satisfied I got a lawyer and a manager, an agent and a chef Three nannies and a sister and a driver and a chef A trainer and a butler and a body got a vibe A doctor and a stylist, do you think I'm satisfied? my extreme point of view I'm not a Christian and I'm not a Jew I'm just living out the American dream and I just realized that nothing is what it seems Anticipation for the new album was high as was the abundance of mp3 file sharing sites such as LimeWire to counter illegal downloads of the upcoming record, Madonna's associates created a number of false MP3 files of similar length and size to the tracks on the album. Some delivered a brief message from Madonna. What the f*** do you think you're doing? Madonna's website was then hacked, with the hacker adding a message appearing on the main page, saying, 
This Is What The Fuck I Think I'm Doing, followed by download links for the album and the single. The website was closed after the attack for about 15 hours. The album was officially released on the 21st of April 2003 and debuted at number one on the US Billboard 200 chart with 241,000 copies sold in its first week. It was Madonna's second consecutive number one debut and her fifth number one album overall in the US. Just months after its release, it was certified platinum. In the UK, American Life also debuted at the top of the album chart, with sales of 65,013 copies. In European countries, the album topped the chart in Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, France, Italy, Norway, Sweden and Switzerland. American Life was awarded a platinum certification, signifying sales of over 1 million copies across Europe. Madonna promoted the album during a small promotional tour in April and May of 2003. Up. I'm not doing that. Can I start again? Okay. All right, here I go. See, you guys are making me nervous. See, Monty's my guitar teacher, and after this, I'm going to get an ass whooping. Did you write many of these or all of these? I wrote all the lyrics. You wrote all the lyrics, mm -hmm. so that took a lot of time, too, Ooh, right? Yeah. This is a change in direction in, in your personal life, mm -hmm. in your thinking. That's yeah. what they're saying about it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, much, what, yeah. what is that change? What, what, what is, if you were to explain what these songs mean to you in a personal way, what is this all about? Um, well, I suppose I've had, I feel like I've sort of had a revelation and, um, and I, I, I hope the songs are a reflection of mm -hmm. that. Um, basically a realization that, um, that nothing is what it seems and that that is what I say in my song mm -hmm. um, and that 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 there's absolutely nothing in the material world or the physical world that is going to bring you happiness mm -hmm. that uh, the only thing that matters is the way you treat people and love and did your <coughs> children have uh, anything to do with this new sure attitude yeah. absolutely sure. I filmed it in January, and by the time the video was finished, we were at war. And many of the things that I sort of was trying to depict or warn people out about were already happening in the world. But, you know, with everything that's going on right now, and, you know, the soldiers being killed and wounded, and, and the destruction that's taking place, and, and I just don't think it's appropriate. Here's where I have to stop you. If you wanted to make a pro-peace, anti-war video, mm -hmm what better time to show it and get people to look at it than a time of war? I agree with you in theory, but unfortunately um, I feel like um, America's in a really volatile place right now and there's a lot of really confused people and I'm not interested in being a target for a lynch mob mentality. So, th so this is personal safety. This isn't an unwillingness to push some buttons. It's a c no. It's a combination. I'm I'm very willing to push buttons. I don't have a problem with that. But I think I think that what people would misconstrue is that I was slagging off President Bush, and I'm not. I think that they would misconstrue that I was um, making light of what's happening to the soldiers in Iraq, which I'm not. I just don't think that people, right now, things are so serious and people are so volatile that they're not going to see irony. They're not going to see subtlety. They're not going to see the message. But you've never message. worried about that before. Well, you, this is the first time that I've sat and talked to you in 10, we've 12 never, years. We haven't, since you've talked to me, have we been, have we been in this series of situation? But you've taken on religion before. You've never worried about people misinterpreting well, your message. Because it's your message. And I'm curious why you're because, worried about it now. Because ultimately... I don't want to just be provocative for the sake of being provocative. Hi, I'm Dr. David Risch, and I'm planning to inject somebody with Botox.
got gloves. If you can keep it with the logo on the back. Guys, quick us up the mo. Does that cost extra money for you? Yes, exactly. So, Dr. Rich, yeah. if you can see here, does that have a good, good clear view of that? Of that? Okay, yeah, I sure do. Yeah, well, uh, okay. Hi, David. How are you doing? I'm good. I get to give you fake pain and suffering. Exactly. I'm very happy about that. Ow! Okay. So, how are we starting? Okay. So, she's going to sing a little bit. And I'd walk to one, two takes like this. The way she's doing the injection. No, no, yeah. you have to be ready to do injection. I'm After ready. we do some, what she doesn't see, and you would be able to do the mount. And I put her on mine. And roll playback. Everybody comes to Hollywood. You want to make it in the neighborhood. They like the smell of it in Hollywood. How could it hurt you when it looks so good? Shine your lights now. Okay. We are moving on now to our pink room, the ballet bar, right over this way. Patrick, stand by your friend. I hope I get this audition. Watch this, Miss Pink. I won't make it down. Here we go for picture. And. Role playback, please. For all the aspiring Hollywood people out there, what might like you tell them? Aspiring Hollywood people? Like myself, you mean? Be flexible for Mr. Be multi-talented, be flexible, and never take it personally. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap. Thank you all very much for a good day. Day one down. We'll see you tomorrow. Crew call 9 a.m. Welcome to uh, day two of the Madonna Hollywood video. We'll be starting out today right here in our hotel room set with some performance and a French maid. This is my personal sure. French maid. You are French, aren't you? No, I'm Sicilian. Oh dear. There's a buckle here. This is my Sicilian maid. Let's roll and, and, and you will look at it. Here we go for picture. Roll playback, please. We will be flashing on this. Everybody comes to Hollywood. We want to make it in the neighborhood. They like the smell of it in Hollywood. I realize now that fame and fortune and looking good means nothing if you don't have the right value system, if you don't re recognize that none of those things are going to bring you happiness. But the only thing that's going to bring you happiness is, is love and how you treat your fellow man and um, having compassion for one another as human beings. Cut, cut, cut. It's a tough job, but somebody's going to do it. So we are moving on, everybody, moving from our hotel room set over to the motel TV room. Because the l'éclair maintenant c'est l'autre source, that's interesting. Is it okay to shoot your entrance right there? Is that all right? Yeah. All right. God, what's up? You guys are finally like learning matters. <laughs> Did you go to the MTV etiquette school? Careful you know, walk into like... See, if I didn't have manners, I wouldn't tell you you're about to trip over something. I'm just wearing my bathroom. It's too cold in here for me to take my robe off. 
I'm not taking my robe off. I want a fireplace. Okay, here we go for picture. Let's get that slate ready. Okay. Roll playback, please. We as Americans are also completely obsessed and wrapped up in a lot of the wrong values. You know, looking good, having lots of cash in the bank, being perceived as rich and famous or successful, just being famous. You know, there seems to be an unnatural obsession, especially with all these reality TV shows, of, with just being famous, just for the sake of being famous. Not because you have anything that you want to say, not because you've worked particularly hard for it. So that's kind of like the most superficial side of the American dream. Cut, cut, cut. Ready? Bonjour. Talking and moving like this, okay? That's, that's beautiful. That's good. Sometimes I would go, ah, that is super. So this is it. This is the perfect angle. This is the right shoot. Yeah. Nobody told me my butt over there. Take the wind. Okay. Stand by for picture, everybody. Okay. Roll playback, please. Everybody comes to Hollywood. They want to make it in the neighborhood. It's just kind of like a poetic magic that happens. Songs just come to me when I hear music. Something jars something in me and I have an emotional reaction to it and I just start writing. Now that I've learned how to play guitar, I don't need to rely on other people to help me out with that process. So maybe that's why the songs probably seem a bit more intimate than other songs. Photographs. You want to take my picture? Yeah, but you, you, we didn't have time. I don't care. Just take a few pictures. Because it sounds a little bit like Madonna. You're someone who's benefited from celebrity as much as anyone has and enjoyed it benefited enjo and but i've also seen the other side okay of it but you well. enjoyed the ride and now it seems at 40 something years old you're looking back and saying celebrity bull um to a certain extent i am because i see that how obsessed with celebrity everybody is and i'm saying you know if you're only halfway up to the top you can hardly say i know it's not going to bring me happiness i know it's on the 27th of May 2003, Hollywood became the official second single to be released. The track would again peak at number two in the UK, but failed to chart on the US Billboard Hot 100. The song charted much better across Europe. In 2003 MTV Video Music Awards, Madonna performed a remix of Hollywood alongside Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera and Missy Elliott, and engaged in open mouth kissing with Aguilera and Spears, gaining great controversy and publicity. The world is still talking about it. 
And it's almost, what, two weeks later? I got on a plane and went to Scotland yeah. that night. So yeah. I'm, I've been oblivious until yeah. this moment. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that it was like on the front page? Of the I had no idea that it was going to cause the, uh, well, the ruckus that it caused. <laughs> I mean, I it was just a friendly kiss. You it, not it really, it not really only, was, I swear to God. Not only did, was it a ruckus, but it's like major news stories. I heard that it's been like running on clips over and over and over again in this country. But you are totally oblivious. Yeah, there must be a lack of news stories or something, right? Yeah. Now, was that planned or was it spontaneous or what was it? What um, was that? Basically, it was supposed to, you know... I was the groom, and yeah. I had two brides, yes. right? So, you know, the groom and the bride are supposed to kiss. Yeah. And it was just meant to be a playful kind of um, ironic comment on the bride and groom kissing, because I had two brides, so I was going to kiss both of my brides. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. all of the rehearsals, rehearsals we did, it was very, you know, mwah, mwah. Mwah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that then was more than mwah. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was... I know that, but that's, if, if Brittany it looks like she's, you know, Kissing me in an aggressive manner, it was a surprise to me. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a showgirl. After 20 years in show business, we learn to roll with the punches. You know? Absolutely. That's right. So you don't go, oh, you my. You get a lemon, you make lemonade. If someone comes at you with their lips slightly parted, you have to kiss them. <laughs> While rehearsing for their performance at the MTV Video Music Awards, Britney played a finished version of Me Against the Music to Madonna. After Madonna commented that she liked the track, Britney asked her to do the song with her. Madonna arranged and recorded her vocal auditions on her own, turning the song into a duet. The track would be released as the lead single from Britney's In The Zone album. It's Madonna. It's an honor to have her here. I think she's a visual artist. She, she knows what she wants, and you see that, and it's inspiring to be around somebody like that. I've tried to pick up some little things from myself. Very good. All right. Got that one. Got that one. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> me Against the Music was released on the 14th of October 2003 and peaked at number 35 in the US, number 2 in the UK and number 1 in Australia, Canada, Croatia, Denmark, Hungary, Ireland and Spain. You said a thing anyone can see. What is it with you? You said a thing, just take it from me. It was not a chance meeting, feel my heart beating. You're the one. Shortly after, on the 27th of October 2003, the track Nothing Fails was released as the third single. The track had originally been demoed as Silly Thing by the singer Jem. The demo, which sounded like an offbeat folk song, had been played for Madonna who loved it, and added to and changed parts including the title of the song. Fails did not chart on the US Billboard Hot 100, making it the second single from the album to fail to chart in the US. 
Nevertheless, the song did reach number one in Spain and the top ten in Canada and Italy. No music video was filmed for Nothing Fails and the track was not released in the UK. When I get lost in space I can return to this place Cause you're the one comes to Hollywood. In November, Madonna released a side project remixed and revisited. It coincided with the mashup remix of Hollywood Into the Groove featuring Missy Elliott to promote the latest Gap ad campaign. The album contained four songs in remixed form from American Life and a previously unreleased song, Your Honesty, which was originally written and recorded for her 1994 sixth studio album, Bedtime Stories. Also included was the live performance of Like a Virgin and Hollywood from the MTV Video Music Awards. The release peaked at number 115 on the Billboard 200 in the US. The remix album would also mark the final release under Madonna's contract with Maverick Records. Love Profusion would complete the single releases off American Life and was released on the 8th of December 2003. Love Profusion failed to chart on the US Billboard Hot 100, similarly to the prior single releases. Internationally, the single was number one in Spain as well as reaching the top five in Canada and Italy. In the UK, the track peaked at number 11. Under my skin, I got you. Under my skin, I got you. Under my skin, I got you. Under my skin. American Life was supported by Madonna's Reinvention World Tour which was the highest grossing tour of 2004, earning $125 million. I have to ask you something. Yes, Mom. How do you say, I'm going to tell you a secret? Je vais te dire un secret. Bon, d'accord. The tour was chronicled Let's in the documentary, I'm Going to Tell You a Secret, which led to Madonna's first live album of the same name. Than I ever did before, and sometimes I say to myself, what was I thinking before I was thinking? I am the queen! Okay, I have a huge ego and I need to do something about it. I need to change. And how can I change? The only way I can change is to constantly work at it. It took me a while to grow up. Instead of growing up at home, she was growing up with the world. How are you, darling? I'd interview some people outside for you. You do? Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka, they call me at Puerto Rico. Let me tell you, he's a fan. Is he? Oh, yeah. I think that the most like important thing for me to Madonna is like the uh, express yourself stuff. Oh, kiss a kiss. are younger than everybody and a lot of them this is their first experience <laughs> I worry about them from the minute they leave my sight I have so many tales to tell I need to change this is the end or the beginning depending on how you look at it what the heck are you talking about A 
American Life once again found Madonna pushing the boundaries of the current musical landscape, testing her audiences and no doubt perplexing her critics. Her work with Mirways crafted an unmatched quality in musical production, giving the album listening experience a totally unique and submersive feeling, similar to her approach on Ray of Light with William Orbit. At times sounding cold and clinical, at others warm and inviting, American Life would be the last time Madonna crafted an album with such authenticity, passion and vulnerability until Rebel Heart some 12 years later in 2015 and her reunion record with Mirways, 2019's Madam X. A misunderstood album from Madonna? Potentially. However, personally, it's definitely one of my favourites. Thanks for watching. Looking for sympathy, I never come for me. I try to find a friend. It's more easily said, it's always been the same. This type of modern life is it for me. This type of modern life.